Okay, we're going to talk about uh, bridge financing right now. Uh, this is another complex one. Bridge, fi bridge financing as a concept is right up there with convertible debt and warrants in terms of its complexity. So uh, be patient in terms of understanding this and don't get discouraged if you don't understand it the first time you watch it. Uh, there are all kinds of options inside of these things as well, which we won't even talk about because it gets even more complex. I'm going to walk you through the basics of a bridge financing, why they happen, sort of what the dynamics of bridge financings are, and hopefully you'll get a basic understanding of what, uh, why companies use them and to what ends. So a bridge financing is essentially a loan that converts to equity um, at a discount rate after something called a trigger event, and that's usually the next funding round. And what that means is you're essentially bridging. Um, it's a form of convertible debt, uh, and you're essentially taking a loan from your existing investors. You're, they're giving you a little bit of money right now as a loan, and you're waiting until a funding event happens in the future, in which case it will, uh, it will um, convert into equity in that funding round. So it sounds like a good thing, uh, because your investors, your current investors is usually who's doing it, it's an interim or quote unquote bridge financing to get you from one place to another. And it's your existing equity investors. It sounds like a good thing. Your ex existing investors are saying, we still believe in you. Here's a little bit of money. Keep going until you get to your next big funding event. Uh, but it can be a bad thing, which we'll talk about. It can work out terribly for the entrepreneur. So it's important to understand it's a form of convertible debt. If you don't know what convertible debt is, watch our video on convertible debt. Uh, that's important. That's where all this math comes from. Uh, so let's walk through what a bridge loan is. So we, we, in our convertible debt video, we used an example of Hasselhoff.com that uh, had a convertible debt instrument of 500K. They went toward, a, they have a discount, which from that video you'll know is essentially an interest rate uh, that's associated with risk. And you can either get a discount or you can get warrant coverage. And if you don't know what warrants are, watch our video on warrants. Um, but the point there is that because I'm doing the bridge investment, meaning I'm putting a little money down right now and waiting for investment later, I have increased risk. So if I put 500 grand down, I get my 500 grand plus a little more in compensation for my risk. Uh, that's what this discount rate is. So they originally got a convertible debt issuance of 500 grand. They did a series A raise at a 3 million post money. And this is how the ownership percentage is split out after that discount percentage converted. Um, like I said, go watch the convertible debt video if you want to see the math. And what happens is now that the Series A investor, Snobulous Capital, owns 50% of the company, uh, the Anglebiter Partners, which was the original investor, they own 18.5%, and the, the uh, owners of Hasselhoff.com own 31.5%. So that's how it shook out after our example uh, with a $3 million uh, post money. So now let's talk about what happens after that. They move from a series A to a series B. And that's what a bridge financing is, is it's supposed to get you from your series A to your series B. So these guys start building the website and selling David Hasselhoff uh, videos and they start running out of money. Um, so they go back to their original investors, remember, it's their original investors, and they say, hey, we need a bridge loan or bridge financing to get us to the next round. So the existing investor says, okay, we believe in you guys. Uh, but we're taking a lot of risk. What we're going to do is we're going to give you a bridge, and this is Snobulous Capital, who invested on the Series A, for a million dollars. And But we're going to take a discount of 20%. And if you remember from the convertible debt video, that just means they're going to end up getting being able to buy shares at a discount. So they're going to get more shares than they normally would for a million dollars. But the point is that they agree to give you a million dollars in order to let the company keep operating. So what's happening here essentially is that there's an argument. The entrepreneur is betting against the investor uh, that they can go raise money in the future. The entrepreneur is like, trust me, it's not this capital. I just need one million more dollars to tide me over six more months so I can go finish my fundraising efforts with whoever the next investor is. So in this case, the, the Snobulous Capital says, you know, okay, we'll give you a million dollars, we get this interest rate, but we're not really sure that you're going to be able to raise that money in time. So they put a moment in time uh, they put a trigger event in at a moment in time that allows them to choose how they convert. And we'll talk about that in a second. So the entrepreneur says, well, I think the company's worth $6 million. And the investor's thinking, no, I think it's actually worth more like $4 million. But we'll give you a million bucks and we'll let you operate for a while. Uh, and then we'll see sort of what happens out of the bottom. You know, if they can go raise money. So the entrepreneur goes out on the market and starts to raise money. 
And what they're aiming for is a pre-money valuation of $5 million, if they can get that out of their Series B investor. Uh, and then what they're going to do is um, convert that bridge loan into the new raise. So hang with me here. There's three things that can happen. The entrepreneur is betting that they can go out and raise money. If the entrepreneur is right and they raise a bunch of money in time, we'll talk about that. That's the best thing that can happen. If the entrepreneur is not right and they don't raise money in time, but they do raise money, that's sort of a good thing, um, but we'll talk about that. And then the third thing is they have what's called a down round. If you don't know what a down round is, watch the, our video about down rounds. But if they have a down round, that's very bad uh, for the entrepreneur, and we'll talk about why. So let's go through this first one. This is new money. And remember, we've got this bridge, right? You're going from Series A, right here, to Series B, over here. And this million dollars is to tie you over. So literally, it's a bridge. The post money of Series A was three million bucks. That's what the company was worth after you raised money. The pre-money of Series B, you don't know yet, because you're going out to find an investor. So, number one is if the new investor, I'm sorry, the entrepreneur, finds money from a new investor in, in the allotted amount of time, before this time frame, they go raise money, and they get a pre-money of $5 million. What That's great. Good job. The investor raised money. What happens is the new investor puts in a million bucks. The bridge investor, Snobulous Capital, already put up a million bucks. So you've raised two million on a five million pre, so your post money is seven. Now, granted, Snobulous Capital will use their discount of 20%, and we won't go into the math. Again, watch the convertible debt video if you want to know that math. But Snobulous Capital, now you've got two million raised and you have a post money of seven. Good job, the entrepreneur's excited about it. That's option number one. What that means is that the entrepreneur raised money, like he said he would, he or she, she said they would, before this point in time. Because at this point in time, the investor gets to choose whether they bridge into the old post-money valuation or the new pre-money valuation. But since he raised money before that time, automatically the investor comes in at the new pre-money valuation. Okay, so that's great. That's to the, the uh, entrepreneur's advantage because the entrepreneur didn't have to give, got to sell equity at a higher pre-money valuation, which is the whole idea for the entrepreneur. So here's the second version. The entrepreneur does not raise money in time, but they do eventually get an investor. In this case, they go beyond their allotted time frame and they raise money. Now the old investor, Snobulous Capital, who gave the million dollar bridge, gets to decide, do I convert forward or do I convert my equity back? And what they're gonna look at is, if the new pre-money is five million, and I put in a million, you know, I would get one sixth of the company. If the new pre-money, or if I do it at the old post money of three million, I get one third of the company. And that's a simplified way to look at it. So now they have a choice because they went past this point in time, which is specified in the legal documentation. So Snobulous Capital looks at this and says, "Aha! I get to buy a bunch of equity with a million bucks. Do I do it at a five million valuation or a three million? They choose the three million. They come back here and they turn their a million dollars into equity at the last round. Then the new investor puts in their money. So that's called converting back. So that's okay. It's not the end of the world. They converted back, which means they got a bigger chunk of the company. The entrepreneur owns less, but it isn't uh, a disaster for the entrepreneur because they raise new money in the next round, uh, and so things continue. There's a third option, which is terrible, and that's called the down round. If you want to know the mechanics of a down round, watch that video. But what a down round essentially means is that I finished my last round with a $3 million post money. If I do terribly and my company does poorly and I can't convince any investor to invest at a higher valuation, I may only get a $2 million pre-money valuation that was lower than my last post money valuation. So in that case, that's bad news. That's called a down round. In that case, if I don't fit raise money until that point in time, and then it becomes a down round, now the bridge investor, Snobulous Capital, who lent me a million dollars, now they get to choose to either go back to this round, which was a post money of three million, or to bridge forward to your new crappy valuation, which is two million in this case, because you get a bad job running your company. So in this case, they're gonna take their million dollars and convert forward to the new super crappy valuation which means they get 50% of the company, so roughly. So roughly, in this case, we had one-sixth of the company is what you end up with for your million dollars. 
In this case, they end up with one third of the company for their million dollars. And in this case, they end up with 50% of the company for a million dollars. So this can be pretty disastrous for the entrepreneur's ownership. Sometimes it can even wash the entrepreneur out completely. So the bridge loan is sort of helpful because you're, you need it in order to keep operating. But it's also sort of dangerous because you're making a bet. Can I raise money at a certain mo point in time and at a certain valuation? And you can lose that bet by having either a down round uh, or by not raising money in time. So you have to be pretty confident as an entrepreneur that things are going okay and that you'll be able to raise money. Otherwise, it's hugely to the advantage of uh, Snobulous Capital, your original investor. So that's what a, what a bridge loan is or a bridge financing. Um, it, again, it's, it's basically a loan that converts to equity. Um, it uses either discounts or warrants uh, to, to uh, account for the additional risk. And your existing investor, like Snobulous Capital, is essentially lending you a million dollars and betting that you can raise money by a certain point in time.